Uh, good morning, guys. Uh, today's topic is respiratory failure. Uh, the definition of respiratory failure is a syndrome of inadequate gas exchange due to, to a dysfunction of one or more essential components of the respiratory system. That means we will have disorders at the chest, walls, uh, airways, alveolar capillary units, pulmonary circulation, nervous. CNS or brain stem. Here you will see the anatomy of respiratory system. You will see the brain, spinal cord, nervous, intercostal muscles, or also lungs and alveolar unit. Epidemiology. About 360,000 cases per year in the United States. Of that, uh, 36 percent died during hospitalization. Morbidity and mortality rates increase with the age and presence of comorbidities. Classification uh, of uh, respiratory failure, we have four types. The type 1 or hypoxemia, that means the uh, partial pressure of oxygen less than 60 at sea level, failure of oxygen exchange. Also, we have type 2 or uh, hypercapnic, that means a partial pressure of carbon dioxide more than 45, failure to exchange or remove carbon dioxide. Type 3, uh, the respiratory failure, perioperative respiratory failure, increased atelectasis due to the low function residual capacity in the setting of abnormal abdominal wall mechanics. And the type 4, uh, respiratory failure, shock. Type 4 describes patients who are intubated and ventilated in the process of uh, resuscitation of shock. Uh, at the classification, we have uh, four types. Uh, respiratory failure may be acute, chronic, and acute become chronic. Uh, for example, acute exacerbation of advanced COPD. Pathophysiology, uh, we will see hypoxemia failure, that means ventilation of per uh, perfusion mismatch, sharp and exacerbated by low mixed ven venous oxygen. Hypercapnic failure, uh, de decreased minus ventilation re re relative to demand, increased dead space ventilation. Also, we will see the pathophysiology of the um, respiratory failure. We, uh, first of all, we must know the etiologic ca categories. First of all, uh, nervous system failure type 2, that's uh, central hyperventilation, neuropathies. Uh, muscle pump failure type 2, muscular dystrophies, myopathies. Neuromuscular transmission failure also is uh, We'll see at the type 2, myasthenia gravis, and air, airway failure, obstruction or dysfunction. Chest wall and pleural uh, space failure or uh, disorders of the chest wall, for example. Uh, pulmonary vasculature uh, failure, type 1, and alveolar unit failure, type 1. Uh, that means collapse, uh, flooding, edema, blood pass, aspiration, also fibrosis. Uh, causes of the type 1 uh, respiratory failure, it will be pneumonia, cardiogenic pulmonary edema, that means pulmonary edema due to increased hydrostatic pressure, uh, non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, for example, uh, pulmonary edema due to increased perme permeability, Ac acute lung injury, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Uh, pulmonary embolism, atelectasis, and pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, the main causes of type 2 respiratory failure, it will be central hyperventilation, asthma, and chronic obstruction of pulmonary disease. That means hypoxemia and hypercapnia after occurred together. Neuromuscular and chest wall disorders, myopathies, neuropathies, kyphosal scoliosis, myasthenia gravis and obesity hyperventilation syndrome. Never forget about syndrome. It's too rare to find out at patients, but it's also um, important to know about that syndrome. 
types three respiratory failure. Uh, inadequate post-operative analysia, upper abdominal incision, obesity, anxious, anxieties, pre-operation tobacco smoking, excessive airway secretions. Uh, and type 4 respiratory failure is cardiogenic shock, septic shock, uh, hypovolemic shock. Uh, when we want to diagnose the respiratory failure, we must take the history of the patient. Uh, we, will see, we must see sepsis suggested by fever chills, pneumonia suggested by cough, uh, sputum production, chest pain, pulmonary imbalance suggested by sudden onset of shortness of breath or chest pain, COPD exacerbation suggested by the history of heavy smoking, cough, sputum production, cardiogenic pulmonary edema suggested by chest pain, pa uh, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea or atapnea. Non-cardiogenic edema suggested by the presence of risk factors including septis, trauma, aspiration, and blood transfusion, uh, accompanying uh, sensory abnormalities or symptoms of weakness may suggest neuromuscular respiratory failure, as would the history of an injection or administration of drug or toxins. Additional exposure history may help diagnose asthma, expiration, inhalation, injury, and some intestinal lung diseases. Diagnosis and uh, physical findings. Uh, hypotension usually with uh, signs of pure perfusion uh, suggests severe septic of, or massive pulmonary embolus. Hypertension usually with signs of Poor perfusion suggests cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Wheezing suggests airway obstruction, bronchospasm, fixed upper or lower airway pathology, secretion, pulmonary edema, or cardiac asthma. The second name. Uh, also, we will find treaters that suggest upper airway obstruction. Elevated jugular venous pressure suggests right ventricular dysfunction due to accompanying pulmonary hypertension. Tachycardia and arrhythmia may be the cause of cardiac pulmonary edema. When we uh, take laboratory analysis, we will see at the ABG uh, quantifies ma magnitude of gas exchange abnormality and identifies type of chronic uh, and chronicity, chronicity of respiratory failure. Complete blood count, we will find out anemia, polycytemia, uh, leukocytosis, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia. Cardiac uh, serologic markers, that means we will take troponin, uh, CKMB, B-type nitrouretic peptide, uh, microbiology, we also use uh, respiratory cultures, putum, tracheal aspirate, bronchial alveolar lavage, uh, blood, urine, and body fluid cultures. cultures. Uh, Diagnostic investigations, also we will take the chest x-ray, sometimes we will uh, do a high resolution uh, CT. Identify chest wall, pleural and lung parenchymal pathology, uh, disquish uh, disorders that cause primarily VQ mismatch or a shunt, uh, or shunt. Electrocardiogram, identify arrhythmias, ischemia, vent, vent, ventricular dysfunction. Also, we will do echocardiography. Identify right or left ventricular dysfunction. Uh, never forget to do pulmonary function tests uh, or bedside pyrometry uh, when you want to uh, diagnose the respiratory failure. We must identify obstruction, restriction, gas diffusion abnormalities. May be difficult to perform it uh, uh, if uh, critically ill. Bronchoscopy we do not often, but sometimes we will do it and obtain biopsies, brushings, and uh, bronchial alveolar uh, lavage for histology, cytology, and microbiology. Our results may not be available quickly enough to avert respiratory failure. Remember about that. 
and bronchoscopy may not be safe in the if critically ill. Also, we uh, responded to failure management. We do ABCs, ensure airway inadequate, ensure adequate supplemental oxygen and assistant ventilation if indicated, and support circulation is needed. Uh, treatment of specific cause when possible, infection, airway obstruction, improve cardiac function. And also we use mechanical ventilation. We have two types of mechanical ventilation, non-invasive and invasive. Non-invasive that means if patient uh, can protect airway and is uh, hemodynamically stable. We use mask usually or, or orofacial to start. When we use invasive uh, mechanical ventilation, we use endotracheal tube or ETT uh, tracheostomy if upper airway is obstructed. Here we will see the short algorithm to diagnose respiratory failure. First of all, secure airways, uh, need for endotracheal intubation or tracheostomy. If no, we use non-invasive mechanical ventilation. If it fails only in that way, we will use invasive mechanical ventilation. Also, with supplemental oxygen is needed and treat underlying condition. At that slide, at that picture, you will see treatment of respiratory failure. Uh, we have, of course, two types, pump failure and respiratory failure. And uh, here you will see um, the principles of treatment of respiratory failure. R reduce re ventilatory workload, uh, correct electrolyte abnormalities, nutritional support, uh, also we stabilize uh, hemodynamic imbalance, re rehabilitation, oxygenation, medications, uh, and we sometimes will use uh, surgery support um, to the patient. Thank you for your attention.